Yeah. So my name is Attila Marashi. I work for uh, Sophos, uh, the Sophos Labs. Um, first of all, I would like to say thank you for the organizers. This is my third time in uh, DeepSec, so that's not a coincidence. I like this conference so much, and I'm very happy to be here again. So the presentation will be about hacking team and uh, their Android stuff, um, what kind of things they use to infect uh, the Android device of uh, the target persons. So on the agenda, um, first, uh, just a couple of uh, things about hacking team. I think there is no need to be introduced about this company and this phenomenon because they are very popular and uh, the things what happened with the, uh, the company uh, caused so much fun for the IT security guys. Um, then uh, the leak, what happened with the company, uh, the WebView exploit, how it's worked and how they delivered uh, the, the exploit. Uh, there will be some demo and after that there will be a couple of uh, things about how they flow under the rudder because uh, uh, the security companies and uh, the, the guys who wanted to hack this uh, company and their product uh, known this phenomenon and stuff uh, many years but they didn't uh, reach a good point and a good analysis at all so they had to be hacked to get all the things about it so they have very good techniques to flew under the rudder so it's interesting to discuss so first of all uh, hacking team so it's a company who provides law enforcement products so products for law enforcement agencies only um, their flagship was the remote control system uh, which was implemented all the interesting operation systems and uh, mobile devices so they were able to monitoring uh, the most of the gadgets we use uh, to deliver the 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 mover and to install it they use uh, remote exploits as well and they use agents locally to to install the the software in 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 human activities um, they develop a bias uh, rootkit to to stay and be uh, controlled over the device after reinstall or or uh, or um, detecting the things so they they have this technology as well and what was the the best point of them because they are law enforcement uh, or because they have support in law enforcement agencies they have the ability to inject and send their exploits in isp sites so most of the hackers do doesn't have this ability so they do not control the isp site so they need something else but if you are in in that site you can deliver your exploit much uh, convenient and you can have uh, other technologies like melting stuff they use so the company gets uh, the the enemy of internet stamp because they sold sold their product in uh, to companies uh, to countries which uh, use this product against journalists and protesters so not traditional criminals um, so they they were attacked and i think that was the reason they were hacked by hacktivists so that was the the starting of the story when uh, the the company uh, official uh, twitter uh, page uh, post and there was a the tweet on uh, Twitter that we released all our stuff and uh, after this uh, couple of months the the community just bubbling about the stuff what was released in this huge amount dumb data so it was for uh, 
400 gigabytes of uh, source code, email discussions, and, and everything they have uh, was released, and, and it it's provides so much uh, munitions for the security uh, community to, to discuss. So after the release, many patch and many hot fix was released because there were, yeah, so that's the summarized. There were six zero days uh, which was released in, uh, in this, uh, this dump data. Um, all their stuff was stolen. The company said that their much, much precious data are still protected, but maybe it's just a, a promo message or, or something to uh, keep their customers uh, closed. Um, in the dumb data, there was release brochures, documentation, so now we have all the information about the things they used. Um, I think just about the release and the stuff they stolen, um, that's, now I think that's the in entry point for criminals. If they would like to produce a malware, which is very tough and uh, uh, could be very detect, could be very difficult to detect. They just seek over this uh, this source code, this documentation. Uh, so it's it's a very good uh, um, knowledge they summarized. So we can expect that criminals will learn about this, and they will use uh, these methods, these technologies and the source code which was released. So uh, for, for other uh, various uh, writers or something, uh, uh, evil guys, it's a very good munition. So it's very good for security guys to analyze it and to get more knowledge about a company like this. And it's a very good munition for criminals to get new techniques and to get uh, new knowledge about how to, how to be uh, very good in this this uh, this field. What was very interesting by the according to emails, uh, how they uh, buy uh, zero days. There is a very good article about it. How they uh, bought the, the zero days they used in their uh, product. Um, I think it's worth to uh, read because it's a gray, gray area. It's, there is no uh, much knowledge about how the zero days are uh, sold and how you can buy it, what happened if they patched. So it's, it's, a, it's something which is rare, so I think it's worth to read. Uh, so the infrastructure was very, very simple, um, how they control the device. There was uh, uh, an agent uh, which has implemented all the interesting platforms. Uh, the, the infection part was the interesting part of it, I think. They had many ways to infect and to install the, the agent on, on the device they, they would like to. So mounting stuff is, uh, was uh, implemented for all the platforms, so PA, XE file, and AP keys, and all the, all the others. Mounting stuff was able to uh, split in species the, the executables and put, uh, put uh, the, the agent in the, in, the, in the executable and repack uh, again. So it's in fact uh, on the fly. So they implement it in ISP proxies. So when you click on, for example, uh, uh, Totacom on there to get the newest version of it, and it wasn't uh, signed by digitally. They were able to put something to the um, to the EXE on the fly, and you get the modified uh, virus. Uh, virus sorry, <laughs> the modified um, um, Totacom on there to install. So it's it's uh, make it very easy to to infect your your machine. So, and the control panel is, um, is traditionally a very fancy control panel for agents to, to uh, send command and uh, to receive the collecting uh, evidence from the, from the device. 
how do they deliver the exploit? Because they don't want to infect the whole world. They have target persons. They have to shoot very, very um, accurate. So not not spreading the the link which uh, spreading the exploit. They have to shut. Mostly they were just one shot exploits. They were uh, send it and check it. It's worked or not and. If uh, it uh, didn't work, they tried uh, some different way or something. So it was uh, a one-shot uh, exploit um, traditionally. Um, so the the techniques they used was very simple. It was just a, a, a PHP file which handled uh, the request, and they combined it with uh, an ini file, which was able to to uh, to manage the, the things which is described here. So the entry point was always was always the FWD, uh, so a sample uh, URL, something like this. That was the ID of the infection. That's the entry point, and that's the, that's the, the other side of the exploit. So it's randomly generated. So when you request this URL, the PHP site uh, seeking for the for the static or dynamic part of it and uh, serve the request. If you call this one, the other part of the exploits uh, get five minutes to be request. So that was the only only way you can reach the exploit. If you try it in different way or you just get the half of it or something, you won't be able to get the whole exploit again. So the best way to get the whole exploit in the right way uh, to have a network uh, flow uh, and and make the analysis in that way. So it makes make, makes uh, much difficult to analyze the the, the exploit process. Um, they filter the the request and and process it uh, dynamically. Here is a, an ini file. So as you can see, there is only two hits. So this exploit, this URL can be called just two times. Uh, that's the expiration. So it's a very short uh, time when you can call it only two times. This is the only agent type which can call it. And if it's valid, uh, the other part of the exploit get five minutes to serve, and um, the the exploit could be could be delivered. Uh, other ways, uh, it's um, redirect you something something uh, else. So the exploits will be disclosure. So the agent they they installed um, on, in Android devices. They developed the uh, a custom shoe uh, root uh, toolkit for their applications. So um, the old name was it uh, RealCap, the new name is DDF, and it has, it was very reachful and was very easy to manage the, the device with root access, and it was difficult to detect that your phone is already rooted. Uh, so normal root uh, detection uh, uh, application won't be able to detect that your phone is rooted. So it was able to modify the permissions of the AP keys. The interesting part of this application, they, they used the media service system and they hooked into the media service system to get all the audio input and output from the, from the hardware part of it. So it doesn't matter that you use uh, Skype or, or, or uh, um, Viber or something else, it's, it's not uh, interesting. Uh, they, they get the source, the input and output at uh, a deeper level, so uh, it was very easy to, to, to monitoring a discussion in a room, for example, because the microwave was also active or just uh, intercept all type of uh, calls. And uh, traditional evidence gathering features, screenshots, clipboard monitoring, location tracking, and they parsed all the databases of the interesting um, 
um, uh, communication applications, so uh, they get all the information from, from that part. So the DDF um, root uh, tool was very, very easy to use. It has uh, some parameters and uh, they just call, for example, QZUX and then the command they would like to execute is a root or get a root shell with this one or add uh, an application as an administrator application um, or modify, seek for content in, in files uh, regardless uh, you have uh, um, access for the file or not because they have root access. So it's, it's make it much easier to, to use the root power on, uh, on the device. So how the exploits looks like in, uh, in this platform? Uh, they used um, an exploit against WebView. WebView is um, not now, but previously was um, um, a part of the operation system, so it's a part of the Android uh, system. Um, their, uh, their uh, exploit works on 4.0 until to 4.3. Um, in this time, uh, the Android was equipped with a, with a WebKit when uh, three vulnerabilities were, were in, uh, in that uh, WebKit, and they join the three vulnerabilities to create uh, uh, and get a code execution on, on the device. So it's a very sophisticated exploit. They, um, this exploit has four stage, five stage to get the code execution, and then they download some other stuff to download other and other stuff. So it's uh, uh, a little bit complicated, but they were lucky because one of the weaknesses was uh, was an uh, information leak, so they got, they were able to bypass uh, the ASLR, and then they used uh, three others to to manage the code execution. For local exploits uh, and to get root access. Uh, they use the uh, known exploits, so there is no new things in that part. But uh, because Android's device very typically very rarely updated and firmware changed, um, it could be worked on, on many devices. So that's the three uh, vulnerable. Uh, vulnerabilities they used and they combined together to, to get the, the code execution. So information was used to, to bypass the ASLR memory read uh, to, to get the lib web core um, point of, of the memory and buffer overflow to write the, the payload in a, in the right place. If you check it, as you can see, it's all belongs to Chrome, so it's uh, it's not an Android stuff. It's a co uh, Chrome stuff. Just uh, the Chrome WebKit was port into uh, Android, and that was the that was the chance for them to use these vulnerabilities. So these are not not Android vulnerabilities. These are Chrome vulnerabilities. So this uh, graph is uh, this September, so it's not so old, and still more than 35% of the used device currently are vulnerable against this WebView exploit. Um, and as you can see, the 4.0 until the 4.3, the uh, WebView when the three vulnerabilities there, uh, uh, so these are these Androids equipped with this uh, WebKit. So that's that's the problem. Uh, the latest uh, Android uh, has a has WebView with a different uh, engine, and it's uh, delivered as an AP key. So it could be very frequently updated. So 
um, it could be not a serious problem um, in the future than, than previously because uh, if, if a component is vulnerable and is there uh, exploits against uh, it and it's into the, into the firmware, you can update the whole uh, Android and to patch the, the, um, the, the vulnerabilities. So it makes it much difficult. That's the problem with the, with the old Android devices. So this is the, 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 uh, the device they, they uh, focused on uh, with their exploits. Uh, local to root and uh, uh, sorry, remote to loot. Uh, so that means the the web view working there, and local to root means that the the three uh, root exploits working on these devices. So uh, the company focused on on this uh, uh, these devices, um, but it could be worked on, on many more, but uh, they haven't tested. But it's many. So some Samsung um, devices cover the, the largest part of Android devices. So how the the web view exploit work? First, uh, the Go HTML it was able to check that the information leak uh, leak uh, um, vulnerabilities there or not. Uh, uh, if the device is not vulnerable, they're just pointing something else, something, um, yeah. Uh, the script, uh, yes, is a 3,000 line uh, code to manage the whole, ex whole uh, exploitation. Um, according to the emails, uh, it seems to be they bought this framework from Wupen and they filled and changed the exploit uh, in, the, in the file. So Wupen sold this, uh, this framework. Um, it's, it's very funny that uh, it's a framework. You can change the, change the exploits you would like to, change the, the vulnerabilities you would like to use for, for some purpose, but uh, for, for managing the exploits, you have the, a very com confident uh, comfortable framework to, to use it. So it's very professional stuff. When they prepare the memory for exploitation, um, they use the memory read uh, 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 weaknesses to, to get uh, the right information and to prepare and uh, to create a, a mall form and a well-crafted XML to use it with XHLT and trigger uh, the, the buffer overflow exploit. All the steps, they check back that they are in the right position, they have all the information and everything's work uh, in a way they want it. Otherwise, they just terminated the things to not, not uh, disclosure more part of the, of the exploit. So when they reach this part, they check it, okay, everything seems to be nice, then download the other part of the exploit. And when the module was uh, the, f the first payload, it's a shared library, they write it into the memory, and when they prepare the, the final stage, they just call it with the right parameters, and the, the, uh, the library just download the other part of the, of the exploits, which was the exploit. It's very stupid that they, they call the exploit, it's exploit. Uh, I don't know why. Uh, and uh, so there was the exploit, that's, that's the root exploit to gain root access. And the installer, which is a, a scout agent, it's, a, it's just an application to check the device, collect information about the device, send back home to, to give information from, to the agent that they infect the right phone or not. Um, they do uh, this uh, method. Um, so they, they not install the, the, the fully equipped uh, malware on, um, on the device at the first step. They just send a scout to get more information about the device they just hit. And when 
they they confirm that okay we are in a in a right device then they update the, the device for a more powerful stuff so the installer is just a scout agent um yeah so the exploits is uh, is is the 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 exploits and they uh, this this uh lf uh dropped the the ddf uh into the into the system bin to to provide the ability for the scout agent to get more access so if you had uh, uh, knowledge about just call the ddf with the right parameters any application can use it um, uh, with root uh, access to get root access or something so uh, in uh, stage four they that's the, the the last step when they prepared everything they copy and write everything they just send this value back to the server um, this is a memory value and that's a check that everything's correct send it back and our, the response was the right AS key to decrypt these two files. Otherwise, they provide something bullshit, and uh, you won't be able to decrypt the the, the two files. So let's demo. Um, the first would be uh, an email. I just send an email to the device, click on it, and trigger. But as uh, as hacking team also realized that for for target person it's not working, so they can they can send well crafted emails and SMSs that it would be nice to click on it and next next finish install yet no, it's not working, uh, so they use the ISP and other techniques to to install uh, the. Their, um, their application using this exploit. So I would like to demo this uh, version. When um, I, I use a, uh, my, it's not a, not a Wi-Fi, I, I use a VPN. Just imagine it, it's a Wi-Fi, it could be a Wi-Fi. Uh, so maybe I'm uh, in an ISP or I just provide a free and a very flattering uh, free Wi-Fi to join or just using the DeepSec. Uh, free Wi-Fi and hijack your connection. So there are many ways to get the flow in a shared network. Um, and I just use the, the mid proxy to selecting the HTTP request. I know that which uh, WebKit version is vulnerable, so I do not touch any of the, of the not suitable HTTP request, so we have a right network connection, but when we get a right request with the right content, I just inject an iframe and, and then the application will be installed through the, through the uh, exploit. Yeah. Oh, yeah, so the demo. So that's my device. Yeah, it's going a little bit slow. Okay, and I have a server here. Yeah, and there was some request. So I just open um, um, index. It's a Hungarian uh, news site. So it's working um, correctly. And if you check it, I'm a sad panda because this uh, agent, this uh, WebKit, yeah, it's a newer one because the Chrome, uh, if you install the Chrome or use uh, the latest version, which is uh, in fact in involved with this exploit, the 4.3, its uh, original act would be the, with Chrome and this has uh, its own WebKit, it's delivered an own WebKit, WebKit, so this application is not vulnerable. But what if I use an application which use and um, uh, yeah use the the WebKit I would like to attack. So Android applications very often use Web View because it's a very powerful tool to display content. Uh, you just 
put it to the display and provide some HTML part. It's very easy to manage, much easier than, than create uh, Android layouts and button. It's, it's complicated. Just put a web view and uh, provide a, a web page and, and everything will be fine. So uh, this application installed more than 100 million devices, so it's not a, not a popular one, but it doesn't matter because uh, the WebKit is used very frequently. Uh, if I click on, click on uh, images, we will recognize that this request was good for us because the, uh, the, the operation system provides a WebKit and this web it is vulnerable, so I can inject an iframe. And if you check the, the exploit server, as you can see the logs here, uh, we send uh, the goal, the script, uh, that's, the, that's the crafted XML, that's the module which downloads the other parts. And as you can see, the key was correct for us and this is the exploit and the installer. So uh, the payloads worked well, download the exploits, the, the root exploit and the installer. The installer is my, my test application, so not the, not the hacking team one, it's a very dummy application. It was created by um, Android Studio and Nexus Finish. So it's um, not a feature for uh, stuff. Uh, it has many sleeps and things, so it makes time to to get the new application on, on, sorry, on uh, our device. But it will, yeah. So I, I just continue and we will see that um, the install was correct. So yeah, how they flew under the radar. Uh, because all the source code uh, released, we know that they obfuscated all static data in their code, uh, in coding stage. So they just, uh, they just uh, obfuscating everything before the build and then they build it and they pack it and then they use the uh, commercial tools uh, to protect it. So they use multi-levels to make it uh, uh, much, much painful to, to get the data and uh, to code back. So, um, it was very, very tough to, to, to reverse engineer uh, the things. Uh, the melting, as I mentioned, that um, they were able to melt the things together, which makes um, their application less suspicious because you just download something and install it, and there were no need to, to provide new application, just, just infect something. Um, and as I mentioned that they use the Scout, Elite and Soldier, uh, different version and different feature full uh, version of the application, not, not disclosure all, the, all the, the things they use. So they increase the level when they know that, okay, we are in the right position, that's the device we would like to infect it. There is no application on the device which is backlisted, which could cause uh, 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 an alert or something we we haven't handled or something so they protect their stuff and for example if um, a protsmon or something running on your system they just go back okay it's too risky maybe next time maybe something else would be nice for it but not risking the the full code of it because uh, it could cause the uh, losing the the product so for example, the, the dropper has uh, antivirus, uh, anti-VM uh, detections uh, with, uh, with uh, VME queries to, to get information. And they were able to configure that this, uh, this agent allowed to run on, on a virtual machine or not. So they can, so that was the chance to to, to test it because they test it in virtual machines, so we have to control, uh, configure it. So they have uh, cuckoo avoiding techniques. They use uh, uh, a trap for cuckoo mon DLL. 
that they put uh, you know, a very big value in FS44, and then they call the sleep, which, is, which was hooked by Cuckoo uh, with one uh, minute. And when they call it, it's called the crash, and the application just stopped, and uh, the report was empty. If uh, they reach that part, that means that Cuckoo, there, there is no Cuckoo there, so they can continue the, the execution. For Android devices, they use these techniques to, to get the information about uh, it, it's the emulator, for example. So emulator has this um, static value if you not change it, or um, for example, the, uh, the CPU file does not exist uh, on, uh, on emulator. So with this, they can, they can check it, um, which device they are running. And um, for me, the most interesting part, they had uh, a dedicated cluster, um, uh, dedicated VMs for, for separating uh, antivirus product, and they always uh, monitorizing their application against all the antiviruses and checking and puppeting the application that maybe it's cause uh, alert or not. They have a full environment and for example, you can, you can use it out of the box, and if you are developing malwares, it's a very powerful stuff, because if you would like to develop something like this, it's, it's time consulting. But now, everyone has these tools, everyone has this knowledge, so I think it's increasing the, the level of the, the entry point of, of creating uh, malwares. So it was a, a QA process for, for them. That they, as you can see, it's a very big cluster. The most of the non-antivirus systems are there. And they have uh, an, an agent, and they just puppeting the, the, their agent that, OK, collect all the emails from that number to that. And maybe it's caused something which uh, which gives give an alert, uh, one of or more of it. Maybe it will be silent or just start a keylog and um, just uh, monitorizing that is there an alert somewhere or not. So it's a very powerful tool if you would like to bypass antivirus systems. Yeah. So conclusion. Uh, I think they they do their job in a right way but um, they have mm, clever enemies or, or something, so their, their stuff never reverse engineered fully. They combined um, the protecting solutions uh, in a right way, and they have a very, if you compare it, for example, Zbot or, or other big families, uh, they, they threatening very few people, so, that could be um, good protection, that uh, not spreading your malware, just pointing to, to your uh, target. So I, this also protects their, their product, uh, product. But um, I think it, it was well designed and, and they use uh, the techniques very cleverly. Um, the web view, as you know, I, I didn't show the the installed application. So that's the evil application I installed. So with uh, with uh, hijacking the network flow, I can install this very stupid application on the device. So um, yeah, this exploit could be used to to install something on on a device. But which is, I think, much uh, scary that you don't have to deliver a root exploit to install something. If there is an application, for example, a password protector, and you can, you can gain a code execution in the name of the password protector because they have web view and you can hijack an unencrypted uh, uh, traffic, you can loot the application and you can get the value without pawning the full Android device, and you get the, the precious stuff 
from them and just let the device alone. No one knows that you own the device, you stole the things, because it's just in a memory. When you kill the application, everything will be gone. So it's very scare, uh, scary. And um, for example, this is the most popular password protector application, if I find, yeah, Keeper. And for example, if you use the Keeper in a way like, like this, and you have uh, a link like this, and HTTP, and there is no S, and you click on it, you can use the, the Keeper to, to display the page, and you will be able to hijack this connection as well, and you can, yeah, here, and you can, you can execute the, the, the exploit in a, in a uh, name and the context of the Keeper, so you can loot the application. So, this exploit is freely available. Uh, um, criminals can be using without any investment, so it's very cheap. Just set up a free uh, Wi-Fi, uh, and if you have a chance, just uh, hit the web view exploit, load the application, it doesn't matter which application, and you can select uh, the, the gathered value. Uh, it's very difficult to, to get information about it, and the most of the, the product uh, in, uh, in Android do not have the chance to get that flow because the applications are separated, so you do not know that that application was pawned or not, if you don't want to touch the other part of the phone. So, um, okay, it's not for all Android, it's that part, but it's still uh, more than 35% of the device, so, yeah. Um, 